Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. My name is Derek Riley. Today we are joined by Dr. Ewing McTurk. He is on the channel before where we did a piece on the WLTP ratings that manufacturers give their vehicles. So make sure you go back and check that out. I'll stick a link on the screen and in the description. But I was talk to, talking to Dr. Ewing about uh, another subject matter that's starting to creep up with manufacturers and that is the difference between a 400 volt architecture and an 800 volt architecture and how that can affect charging times, etc. So I don't know a lot about it. And I said, Dr. Ewan McTurk, hopefully will know a bit about it. So uh, Ewan, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having us back on, Derek. Yeah. Not at all. Uh, you, uh, We were chatting before we hit record and you were saying that you had a fairly decent understanding of the whole, uh, the difference between and why manufacturers may go one way or the other, but you've done a bit of research on it just to confirm everything that is up to date. So I'll happily hand over to you and uh, let us know the difference between 400 volts and 800 volts, not just it's double. Yeah. But obviously, yeah, the, the, there is a bit more to it than than that. So, you know, for the best part of a decade, uh, electric vehicles have been running 400 volt battery packs um, or, or thereabouts. So that translates into 96 lithium ion cells in series. Uh, when they're, they're fully charged, they are typically about 4.1 to 4.2 volts each. Multiply by 96, you get to 400 volts. So... When you're, when you're connecting these cells in series, it's positive to negative, positive to negative, and so on. And that's building up the voltage of the entire system, of the entire battery pack. It's like, you know, making a, a staircase taller. And Understood. that's how you get the, yeah, the, the overall system voltage. Um, however, that in itself isn't necessarily going to be enough for your needs. You might need additional capacity. You might need to widen that staircase. So you'll put the cells in parallel as well. So that's where you connect them positive to positive, negative to negative. And that's how you widen that staircase so you can get even more electrons up and down them. Now, for the, the electric vehicles of the 2010s, you know, the, the Nissan Leaf, the, the Volkswagen e-Golf and so on, 400 volts was fine um, because that meant that uh, when you were rapid charging them on a 50 kilowatt uh, rapid, you know, I'm saying rapid charger, but of course, in the Republic of Ireland, you'll refer to them as fast chargers, which is what we refer to them in Scotland as, as AC. So, um, you know, you're kind of 22 kilowatt stuff. So, yes, DC charging is where we refer to Shadamo or CCS. Uh, it saves me having to translate on the fly. But <laughs> so for your 50 kilowatt DC charger, that was the main state. And that meant that, uh, you know, that, that charger would be pumping out. DC, you know, direct current, um, it was typically 400 volts maximum that it would be uh, engineered towards because it was all built around, you know, your earlier kind of Nissan Leaf, your your um, BMW i3 and so on. Um, and then the maximum current that you typically got on those cables was about 125 amps. So, you know, your power is current times voltage, 125 multiplied by 400. Uh, that's your, your volts, of course, and multiply by the current, then you get 50 kilowatts and that um was was fine but then we started to get um considerably more ambitious with the capacity of the batteries that we were looking at and the charging speed as well and if we maintained a 400 volt system voltage we needed to up the current and in order to up the current we needed bigger heavier cables um, so, you know, you, you were starting to get up towards 200, 300 amp cables um, to be able to supply enough power to these vehicles. But then along came the likes of the Porsche Taycan, which can charge at an excess of 270 kilowatts. So that is going to be some seriously fat cabling if that was at 400 volts. So that is why manufacturers starting with Porsche started to switch to 800 volts architecture. So they were taking the same capacity of, of battery pack that's made up of, you know, hundreds or, or thousands of individual cells, depending on the exact type, you know, size of cells that you're using. And they basically doubled the, the height of the staircase um, and halved the, the width of it. So instead of having, um, you know, so many cells in series and so many in parallel, they would have double the number in series and then half the number in parallel. Because, as I said before, power is current times voltage. So if you double the voltage to get a given amount of power, you can half the current. And that means that when you are dealing with such high power, 200, 300, or well, in the case of the CCS standard today, 350 kilowatts, that is where 
uh, you can get away with much thinner cables, much cheaper cables. You'll get less uh, resistive kind of power losses as well. Um, and as I say, that the higher voltage enables that with a, a thinner, lighter cable that's easier for you to actually physically unplug from the charger and plug into the car itself. And Porsche, you were saying, were the first to come along with the standard, knowing that they were going to do high performance electric vehicles and people would want to fill up faster, a bigger battery, etc. Absolutely, yeah, they were the they were the first to market, um, and then of course the effectively rebadged uh, Audi e-tron GT shares that architecture too, and then uh, Hyundai and Kia with the Ionic Five and the EV6 again, very different looking cars, but fundamentally the same vehicle underneath. Um, they also have 800 volt architecture; they can do crazy quick charging times as a result, um, because yeah, obviously the, the current that it's pushing is is modest, uh, but it's not like ridiculously massive as it would be to get that kind of charging power on a 400 volt battery. Interestingly, Tesla are still typically around about the kind of 400 volt mark, but the superchargers are you know, 250 kilowatts or more these days. So um, you know they are using very short cables on the supercharger and those are very wide cables as well so that they can supply the masses of current that is required. So that's why if you take a Tesla to a high power DC charger that's a universal charger. Um, you might find actually that the charging speed you get on them might not be as much as is advertised. If it's a charger that says it can do, I mean, here's a good example. Um, the ones that are commonly used by Instavolt uh, say that they can do 120 or 125 kilowatts, but quite often the cables on those are limited to 200 amps. So if you're working with a 400 volt battery, you're actually going to top out at 80 kilowatts maximum. And that's where people get a bit confused about what's going on. Meanwhile, someone pulls up next to you in a Taycan or a, an Ionic 5 and gets the full 120, 125 kilowatts because they have a voltage that means that they're not going to be maxing out the current of that cable and hitting up against the voltage limit either. You know, they can actually take the full power that's available because the system voltage is, is higher. Uh, so whatever that is multiplied by the current is going to be higher than it would be if it was limited to 400 volts by the car's battery. I understand. And, some, and coming into the EV space, we're gone very into the weeds with the, with the discussion of 400 volts versus 800 volts. But there is so many factors along that car, cable, charger, that the, the limiting factor or the the, 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 uh, the smallest denominator is the one that limits everything else. So it's people need to understand that and uh but I appreciate people that are watching this are probably a bit more in tune with uh, with that side of things. Uh, Dr. Ewan, do you think that more manufacturers will go this route or do you think it's a it's a niche avenue? Some manufacturers will go down and some won't. They'll stick with the 400 volt or where can you see this ending up? Um, I mean, we were already seeing actually greater than 800 volt systems being proposed like the Lucid Air, which I believe goes up to 920 something volts. So, you know, the, the trend is very much towards higher voltages. I think that 800 will probably be um, you know, fairly standard over the next few years. I can't see 400 volts being retired completely, but um, I certainly think that it's going to be a, a good shout of, of 800 volts becoming increasingly common, especially because now that... Uh, a more kind of mainstream vehicle, the, the Ionic 5 and the, the EV6 um, are doing, you know, 800 volts. That's going to set the standard when it comes to charging times and so on. And I think that a lot more consumers are going to start demanding that of these vehicles. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that we'll, we'll probably see, eight, you know, 800 volts becoming fairly commonplace, especially because we, we're starting to see automotive manufacturers getting used to the safe handling of very high voltage 800 volt dc systems there is you know, obviously the danger when you're servicing a high voltage traction battery is that um because it's dc current unlike the ac stuff that comes out of your wall if you touch that you get blown away from it but dc you stick to it until someone shuts off the power or in the case of a battery someone pulls you off of the thing with a safety hook so you know you want to make sure that you know what you're doing with this and um, yeah, we're, we're starting to see more and more uh, vehicle manufacturers and technicians and so on getting used to safe handling of 800 volt systems. It's, it's safe as long as you follow the correct protocol. So that will probably become standard because it means that you get away with using uh, smaller cables, lighter cables. So there's less material, there's less expense. Um, it's you know arguably more sustainable in that regard as well. 
And actually, we can draw a parallel, admittedly um, not a DC parallel, but an AC um, parallel to this. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the national grid, if you look at big transmission lines, um, you know, the, the sort of 400 kilovolt systems that go up and down mainland Britain, for example, um, the reason that they are such high voltage in comparison to what comes out of your wall is because you can translate, you, know, you can transfer a lot more power with a lot less current and therefore lighter cables, less losses as well. Um, otherwise, everything would be 220, 230 volts and it would be massive, massive cables and there'd be huge losses and it just wouldn't be worth it. So yeah, um, basically the higher the voltage that you go to, then you know, generally the more efficient and, and arguably lightweight that these things become. So yeah, yeah, long story short, uh, 800 volts. Although I've yet to see um, concrete evidence of this trickling down into your kind of... Um, everyday family cars with the exception of the ionic 5 and the ev6 i reckon it's a matter of time and uh, do you see the day where somebody will go into a dealership a, a consumer knowing the difference saying i need something that charges fast we're not we think we need it but anyway uh, and saying is it 800 versus 400 and understanding the difference behind it or will it just always be too technical for consumers um that's a really good question. I think that uh, if we look at the difference between, for example, USB 2 and USB 3, um, you know, these these were, were devices that could plug into the same socket. And in this case, you know, you can go to a, a high power charger and you can plug in a 400 volt car or an 800 volt car on CCS, but one you know, makes much better use of that facility than the other one. The other one kind of hits up against one of those limiting factors. Whether people are going to necessarily understand how those limiting factors come about, and it is fairly kind of um, high school science or, or high school physics when when you get into it, it's it's not scary when you know how, but it does involve being given that bit of education. Are the you know, are the car dealerships going to do the education? Is this stuff that people are going to pick up out of uh, EV owners groups? More likely that sense. But as EVs become mainstream. Is that going to become common knowledge? To be honest, I can see charging networks being the ones who actually do the the biggest bit of kind of awareness and PR on this to try and explain, yes, our chargers can do up to 150 kilowatts, but your car will only get, say, 100 kilowatts, and this is why. It's nothing wrong. It just happens to be that. So, yeah, I... I don't know if it will necessarily become universal knowledge like that, but uh, EV owners groups will always be on hand to provide that information. Um, there's certainly quite good engagement, even from fairly new EV drivers, as it does become the mainstream. Um, and they'll always get the, the answers that they need. So, yeah, I think it, it will gradually filter through, but it will still be, you know, not niche knowledge, but not necessarily the majority of people who know, which is a shame. Um but that said, you know, you're still going to get a decent charge speed off of a, a, a current restricted uh, cable on a, a you know, supposedly high power charger. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it, it's not the end of the world. But, yeah, it will generally be slightly more tech savvy, you know, tech savvy people who are aware of it. If you know the difference between USB 2 and USB 3 and why your USB 3 pen works faster than your USB 2 one, then you'll probably get you'll be, also know about the 400 versus 800 volt thing. Otherwise, maybe not. And won't be doing a video on USB 2 versus USB 3, just so people, in case you put it into the comments. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ewan McTurk, thank you so much again for your explanations. Uh, and for more in-depth explanations about all things electric, you can go to Plug Life TV, Lev Television. Uh, I'll put the link on the screen and also in the description. But uh, thank you, Dr. Ewan McTurk. And hopefully everybody enjoyed the review. Make sure you subscribe to EV Review Ireland. Hit the like button. Leave a comment and let us know what you think, 400 versus 800. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.